Hello and welcome back to the ESL server tutorial. In this episode, we're going to look at the more advanced options of the database connection. We already handled database connection in a separate episode. So if you're unfamiliar with the territory, please watch that episode first. If you have seen that episode, let's dive right into it. In the ESL server, there is a tab for data and the settings are as follows. You have your main setup where you can choose which kind of database you're connected to. We are connected to a MySQL database. And then there are tabs beneath that as well. So we have the connection tab, speaks for itself. The address of the server, the user of the database, the password to access the database, and the name of the database where the data is actually stored and bandwidth usage. Uh, you can change this to uh, instruct ESL server how much data it can actually send over the lines in order to keep your network capacity in check. Now we're running a local database, so we are still sticking to the local SQL server bandwidth usage. If you change anything here or in the other tabs that we're going to treat in a second, be sure to press apply. If you make certain changes that you want to reset, you press that button and it goes back to the settings you had. If you were to type in something and press apply, we're probably going to get the message that it couldn't connect. <laughs> yeah. If you press reset then, Nothing will happen because we already saved it by pressing the apply button. So be sure to test out and do it in increments so that you know exactly at which point something went wrong. So let's go back to what we had. Now it's all working again. So that's the connection tab. Let's go to the next one, tables. Now ESL server, as I already explained in the other database video, needs to store its data somewhere. And in order to do so, we have the following tables that the ESL server uses. First, the products table, which is the table that you see down here. If you connect to a base or if you connect to a database, I should say, if you connect to a database, the database is already pulled for all of the names of the tables that are inside that database. So the dropdown fills automatically. So we can say, yeah, products, are, uh, is the name of the product tables. And we have the products staging table. Now the idea of the staging table, it is uh, a common feature in uh, databases, is sort of a to-do list. It has the same structure as the products, but with an extra field called delete. And basically what you do is when you want to change product information, you don't want to put it in products immediately because the ESL server uh, usually handles thousands upon thousands of products and it doesn't want to check the database for a single change and then reload all 10,000 items. So basically, if you put it in product staging, you instruct the ESL server, hey, this one product has either been added, updated or deleted. And then it processes it, puts it in products and it keeps up to date. Same goes for links. If you use a Opticon scanner and the ESL server web app, like we handled in the ESL's basics tutorial, what actually happened was that the uh, scanner, who is not connected to the actual ESL server software, simply put everything in the links staging table. So the actions that the scanner was performing were uh, processed by the ESL server because it was checking the links staging table for any outside uh, updates. Now, then there are a couple of uh, logging tables. Label status, basically everything you see on the ESL screen with regards to the MAC address and the uh, firmware version that's on board, the last time it pulled, the last time it got a new image, the base station it's connected to, all of that is stored in your logs. 
So here we go, label status. You can use these logging tables as a way to find out whether something has gone wrong with your system. For instance, you're missing a certain label with a specific MAC address. You can sort by the MAC address. You can actually search on an entry. I want to know for all labels starting with B2400. Well, when was the last time that one was online? And everything that that ESL has set as options is all stored. Well, the last time it polled was at that and that time. So we know the last time that it worked. The same goes for the base station status, which is like the ESL label status, but then for the base stations, obviously. There's one for change log and for the log messages. The uh, user table is when you want to have uh, access control to certain uh, actions. Uh, when you have multiple users using the ESL server system, you want to restrict access to certain points of the program. For instance, in a store that is live, you don't want uh, an employee walking around with uh, a handheld scanner to be able to uh, unlink uh, base stations from the ESL server. You do want them to be able to change the product links, and you might have a manager in the store who is allowed to change uh, the product database. And this way you can actually say what actions each user is allowed to do. And we'll get more into that in the settings tutorial. Then there's the actions tables, the action staging, the actions pending and the actions results. And these are specific for the powered ESL range, which we will handle in the tutorial for the powered range of ESL labels. Then there's the images table. You can uh, enable its use whether you want to have it or not. When we were uh, connecting labels with the uh, H28 handheld scanner in the episode of the ESL basic management, we were using the ESL web app. And as I said a moment ago, the ESL web app and the ESL server are completely separate from one another. So the image preview that you usually see on the ESL tab is then stored in a database so that the scanner connected to the ESL server web app can also see that preview. So that's everything in tables. Again, if you change anything, press apply. If you want to turn back the changes you made, press reset. Next we go to fields and fields is specific for the product table. Basically, since the links between products and ESLs is the main goal of an ESL system, we want to make sure that the labels uh, have certain variables preset. Basically, what it means is uh, if an ESL is supposed to show a barcode on the label or show the uh, description, or more importantly, the unique ID in the database, this is the place to set it because these fields are used by the product data, by the links table and by the templates, which are treated in the template episode. Same goes for the from price, the sell price, the group. Those are all variables that we use on ESLs and products. On to the next tab, advanced. Here you can change some of the system wide uh, settings like which currency symbol to use. You can also type in your own if you're from an imaginary kingdom and you have something called the Florent, which is shortened as FLT. You can fill in your own. We're in Europe, so I'm going to put it back to the Euro. Culture info, which is basically uh, what culture the uh, decimal signs should be in. So this is NGB, you can go to NUS, and basically what that means is whether you use commas to separate decimals or points. Well, we're in Europe and the database is already using commas, so I'm going to say we're using English 
Great Britain. Process staging tables. The staging tables I explained just a moment ago. This is how many seconds uh, take uh, are elapsed between each take of that staging table and how fast it uh, reads them. Updating of the status tables. Those are the uh, logging uh, tables that we mentioned a second ago. How often do you want to update those? Again, you can change that number to lower the amount of data that's being sent over the network if that is an issue. A private product table, which allows ESL server to both read and write information to the product table and a public one. If you set it to public, ESL server can still work just fine. But if you make any changes, you need to put them in the product's staging table so the ESL server knows that something has changed. And instead of letting ESL server perform that actual change, you need to do it yourself. Because basically the staging table is then only used to say to the ESL server, hey, just so you know, that product has either updated or been deleted. If you have a really big product database with even more products, you can also say that you want to only load linked products in the memory and have a new product table. Basically what that one means is that if you have a very big database and the ESL server takes a while to boot up because when it boots up, it wants to know all of the latest product data and it loads it all into its memory. If that takes far too long, you can say load only the linked products and then only the products that ESLs are actually linked to will be stored in memory. Now, if you want to link to an ESL, if you want to link an ESL to a product that hasn't been linked to before, you can still press this icon and then this box will load all of the information, but it won't load it on boot only when you're actually going to connect to new products that weren't in that linked table yet. In the advanced step, there's a last one called the field separator. If you're using the uh, comma separated value files as a database, you want to be able to say which character is being used as the separator between values. So you can use the semicolon, the comma, the tab, or the pipe. We're not using CSV at the moment, but if you are using CSV, you can change the field separator here. Then there's a tab called the web application. This is only applicable if you installed it during the installation process. You can see our uh, tutorial video on that. If you used ZAMP, it has all been preset. There is a source folder on your hard drive in the Opticon ESL server installation folder called web app full. And this contains all of the PHP files that the web app uh, consists of. That is the web app that we used on the uh, H28 scanner in the episode when we were linking ESLs. If you've changed the URL, you can press the test button. It opens up the browser. And as you can see, our web application is working just fine. Now the NFC tab is there for backwards compatibility. It isn't actually used anymore. It's not on any of our products that we have in production. So if you're new to the system, you can just ignore this one for the moment. And that is all of the advanced topics with regards to the database. I hope you learned something here about the way that ESL Survey uses its databases and what it exactly needs to operate properly. Now, every database is different. So if you run into any issues or if you have any technical questions that the enclosed manual is not fit to help you with, feel free to contact us. We have our support info in the description below this video. Feel free to contact us. And as uh, usual, thank you for watching and we hope to see you in our next episode.